Well, what is up, everybody? Keith, aka Gator Guy 231, and it is actually Monday night as I'm recording this, but we're here for the Tuesday main UCL slate on DraftKings. Um, hope you guys had a good weekend. It was a it was a nice EPL weekend at, at uh, FSI. I think we got a lot of things right on the preview if you checked it out. Um, but really looking forward to this uh, UCL slate. I think this one, maybe more than the last few, might be a little bit chalkier because we have one overwhelming favorite. Um, and a team that needs to win, whereas we have a lot of other teams that, um, you know, really are kind of we're, – we're at the stages right now. We're, we're in game five of six in this group stages. If you're new to Champions League, like, here's the 30-second cliff notes on how it works, right? So you have the two tops teams from every group. They move on to the round of 16. The third-place team gets to go to your Europa League, which still means money. So, you know, some of these smaller teams, it matters. Um, it can be the difference of, you know, getting a new player. And especially during COVID times, this extra money is huge. You know, it could be extra few set staff members, physio, that type of stuff. But uh, third place goes to Europa League. Fourth place, get the hell out of here. You're done. Um, so there is going to be some stuff to play for. Um, but there's going to be a lot more roster rotation as a result of this, too. Because, you know, a team like Bayern, they've already clinched. They left uh, Gretzka at home. They left uh, Lewandowski at home. I, I think they could play, like, a version of like a second squad youth team. Now, you know, realistically, that's better than Midland, who, you know, that's going to be where the chalk is with Atalanta. Um, but yeah, there should be some value. Uh, I, I think, you know, this preview is going to be a little different than other ones because I think a lot of your roster construction is going to be done after as, as lineups come out um, and, and the value presents itself. I'll try my best to uh, maybe mention, you know, one or two plays that might pop up. But it's going to be really important to make sure that you pay attention. You know, I'll just say this, you know, my style and I, I think a lot of other top player styles is, you know, targeting wide guys, targeting set pieces, targeting those fours that you can get. But obviously, if you find a cheap, cheap attacker, you know, on a favored side or a side that you think may score, that's a, a good route to go to as well. All right. With that out of the way, it's a quick reminder, bottom right of the screen is the subscribe button. If you enjoy this video and so many of the others that we do at FSI, all these videos on YouTube are free. So uh, that's way you can support us for that. Bottom right of the screen, hit that subscribe button. Um, and then like or comment. Um, just a quick reminder, I'm really good at answering questions when it happens before lineups are out. If you comment on a post after uh, lineups are out and don't get a response, that's how it rolls, man. Uh, you know, that time is the time for me building my lineups and helping our subscribers at FSI. If you are interested in joining FSI, plans as low as $3 a day, click the button and you can find, or click the details, you'll find a way to do that. All right, let's get to the games. No more advertising, I promise. This is actually, except for whatever YouTube posts. <laughs> but, but other than that, let's jump into the text. So let's take a quick look at the odds, um, so we get an idea. So uh, Porto and Man City are the top two in their group. Um, Man City very well could rotate players. I think that's a big reason why the minus 163 is there. I think there's a very good chance that we don't see KDB. You got to keep in mind in England, the fixture congestion, congestion is absolutely nuts. And it's going to even get worse during Christmas period. So teams like Man City and Liverpool like really are up against it. Um, Man City's in a better shape than Liverpool. Liverpool's still fighting for their groups. So I have no idea what, the, what Klopp's going to do. And this is a tough game versus Ajax. But Pep may feel comfortable rotating and maybe just going for a draw. Or even if it's 1-0, like, City's going to be fine. You know, maybe it's the difference of being first and second in the group. But I think where City is sitting in the EPL table, Pep's going to prioritize the league. Um, other game, next game, uh, Inter versus Badenbach. Inter, surprisingly, the bottom of their group absolutely needs a win. I think that's priced in at that plus 132, three and a quarter total. Big thing with Inter is their, their defense has just not been as good as you expect from a Conte team. So this is really, I think, one of the uh, super low owned game could absolutely pop off. Uh, maybe try to get three, four pieces from it. And just like a, a complete YOLO DP, GPP dart. Like, I don't think any of these guys are going to fit optimal building unless we maybe see something like Cincy. But um, it's an interesting game. Um, Atalanta versus Midland. That's the chalk. Minus for, uh, 46 for Atalanta. Midland's been awful. Have no points. Um, look, they're already eliminated. They have no chance at Europa either. Um, I think there's a decent shot that Midland actually rotates players. Um, and so maybe we see like a second squad for Midland, which – that could be a disaster versus an Atlanta team who, A, like, let's take away the last, like, two weeks of games, uh, you know, maybe four weeks if you include the international break. Before that time, Atalanta was one of the best attacking teams in the world. This past weekend, even though know, they got shut out versus Verona, they had 20 shots. Um, they are a, you know, an offensive juggernaut. They only know one, one, uh, one method, which is to attack. 
Um, and if they're playing like a rotated middle in squads, it's going to get ugly. So I think that's going to be a lot of ownership. That's going to be the first game we start at and where I'm focusing a lot of my attention. Marseille Olympiacos is the absolute opposite of Atalanta Midland. Um, both these teams, you know, really play almost over pragmatically. Um, not a lot of shots on target, but there is going to be some value in this game we're going to hit on. Atletico Madrid and Bayern, you know, you would normally say, okay, you know, let's, let's look at the Bayern pieces, but I've already mentioned Bayern left a number of their top players at home. They've already clinched. They, this game means nothing to them. They need to prioritize the Bundesliga. They need to prioritize getting healthy. Um, not having Joshua Kimmich in the midfield has been huge for them. So I think Atletico could be a sneaky GPP stack. And then finally, we have Liverpool vs. Ajax, which I have no clue what to do with. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because, I honestly, I just – I think it's a fade. Um, it, it could either be this. It could be either stack the hell out of it and maybe you get, like, all low-owned because I just don't think people are going to be on it based on the pricing. Liverpool's tough, guys. Liverpool's really tough. So I'll, I'll touch on it briefly. But, you know, let's just jump into the game that matters most, um, which is Atlanta versus Midland. Uh, Atlanta, obviously, the biggest favorite in the slate, highest total. If you just went Gomez, Ilicic, Zapata, and don't ban your utility, move Gomez to mid- midfield, I think a lot of people might do, might do the same. And hell, they may just even go and go Robin Gossens and go, all right, I'm figuring it out from here. And I can't blame you. Like if middle, if Atlanta hangs four or five goals here, I won't be shocked at all. There's such a good attacking side. You got to keep this in mind. So I mentioned they scored no goals, but they had 20 shots. So each shot is 20, is a point, right? Each shot assisted, so a shot resulting from a pass is another point. If it's a cross, it's 0.7. All of a sudden, you can see these, these DK points are, ra- are going up really, really quickly. Um, and that was versus Verona side that's half decent in Serie A. Um, they need this game badly. I think there's a really good chance that Atlanta just goes nuts here. So I, I think I would just say this in order preference of my players. Gomez is kind of your lock and load if in. I, I see, I saw some predictions that he's not in, so we got to watch that. But Gomez first. I think Ilicic is second. So I think that most people will want to build on those two. They split set pieces. They shoot a ton. They, they can cross the ball, you know, when it's needed, I should say. Just good plays. And, you know, Ilicic is a little underpriced at 8,600. We saw him at Champions League last year. I think he got to like 12K at one point after I think he dropped like a 48-point outburst. Hell, in Serie A last year, he scored from midfield. Like, he's a great player. Um, and then Zapata is going to be one that I, I don't look at goal scoring odds. It's uh, I'll, at some point I have a it's like DFS 101 soccer I want to post to the channel, but kind of a, well at some point I have a segment I planned out on like why goal scoring odds shouldn't matter because uh, they're just some ridiculous things. There's a lot of public perception on those things, but Zapata is going to have high goal scoring odds, um, and for good reason. It's going to be a high total. Uh, he's a good player, so I think he's really interesting. And then Gossens is actually one of the better attacking wingbacks in the world, but like not from the sense we're used to in DFS, right? Normally we hear wingbacks and we think huge crossing. No, Gosson's going to bomb into the box, look for headers, looking for shooting opportunities. I think he scored close to double digit goals in Syria. I want to say it's like eight or nine, but he can score goals. So at 5,500, he gives a nice upside in the defensive and the, the position. So I think this is very fair as a start. A lot of people maybe go off of Gosson's at 5,500. There's some other defenders under there, but I think a lot of people, if this is the lineup, We'll start these three. Okay, I want to kind of mention some things that could happen. If Gomez is out and they play Illicic as more of a 10, I saw a prediction that had Luis Muriel in. Here's really interesting on Luis Muriel. Um, corners this year for Atalanta. Gomez leads the team. Illicic is second. Malinowski, who is out, is third. Moranchuk has taken some. He's also out with COVID. And then you have Luis Muriel. Luis Muriel is a really good attacker. I think he scored an absurd amount of goals off the bench for Atalanta last year. It would not be crazy if he's not in and that if you go, and I think I'd actually prefer this than Gomez being in because I think the ownership would be different, but you go Muriel, Zapata, and then at the midfield position, go Ilicic. All right, now we're cooking. We even have, we just saved, uh, what, 1,700 off of Gomez? So I would love to see this. I would love no Gomez. I think that would just uh, cause people that maybe aren't watching this preview or uh, aren't as plugged in to soccer to be on a little bit of panic, and I like that a lot. Um, Pasalic, too, another guy that's got his attacker. He's out as well. So be really interesting. Watch this lineup. This is the lineup when I get my little notifications of lines coming. This is the first one I want to see because this is going to dictate the rest of the slate, in my opinion. Um, only other thing I'll just mention. So I, I think I've experimented with a couple builds where you need a punt. Look, 
it would not be crazy, guys, if you go a Roma Fueler 4200 or Martin Darun 3700. They have goal upside. They have assist upside. Um, look, like, I was actually kind of kicking myself on the Europa League slate. Yeah, the, that's true degen, by the way, if you're playing a Europa League slate on Thanksgiving. But thus is me. And uh, I was actually kind of pissed that I didn't really consider Harry Winks. He was like 3,100 on that slate. He ended up like, if you want to watch a f- stupid goal, and j- okay, let me rephrase that. Not just stupid, like awesome, but just crazy goal. Just watch Harry Winks. He uh, bombed there from what, like 60 yards, top post. You know, goalie was coming out. He just decided to lob it over the top. Um, but you got to keep in mind with teams that are going to like onslaught and just have a ton of, uh, of offensive upside. You know, sometimes this is going to happen that Fueler or Darun is going to have the ball and they're just going to make a simple pass and Ilicic is going to bomb it from 30 yards or, or uh, Zapata or all this. And, that, and that's an assist. And like, the guy didn't do a ton to earn it, right? It wasn't like his creative genius that caused the goal. But when you see three, four goals, there's a good chance that some of these midfielders or some of these lower tier guys might get involved. So, you know, if it's between 3,700 um, Martin de Roon or just pick your random 3,700 or fullback, if it's like a dog fullback, maybe you go ahead and do Darun just considering the upside. So just a thought there. Um, I think that covers that game. That should be enough. And that's going to be the longest we spend in a game, guys, I promise, because uh, some of these other games are going to be lineup dependent. Um, the next game I want to go to is City versus Porto. Um, I think – look, I, I guess this is maybe going to be a, maybe a hot take, but I think if Kevin De Bruyne is in, I – I kind of lean towards fading. I, I worry about how much he's going to play, just given the fixture congestion. Um, maybe it could be an early sub. Um, I don't know. I, I think it will all depend on, like, how Atlanta sets up because I really just see him kind of gung-ho on Atlanta. Um, maybe that's going to be the wrong statement. Kevin O'Brien, there's no four like him in the world. Um, trying to think. You know, maybe Kostic when he's at his, at his best. Um, and the Bundesliga matches it, but Kevin De Bruyne is just, it's just insane. Like even this past weekend, he only had I think like one or two crosses, a couple shots, because his passing is so good. They lead to assists. Like he's just he's just absurd. So um, yeah, it's interesting. But if he misses, which I think that there's a good chance that he that he doesn't play. Um, if Mara starts, he'd be jumping on some sets. If Mara's and KDB is out, especially after Mara's phenomenal game, maybe he earned a spot back in the lineup. Um, you know, Phil Foden maybe jumps on sets. Who we saw the last UCL game, he was on splitting with Gundogan. Gundogan 5200 is okay. Um, he's never someone I get like super excited about, but you know, he can give you 7 8 DK. Um, I think that'd be City guys. Like, Porto's good, especially if um, Kevin De Bruyne is not in. I think City could actually struggle breaking down Porto. Um, be really interesting too because Aguero isn't with the team, so um. Look, you know, is, is he all of a sudden – I just realized I, I don't have forward on. But is he all of a sudden, like, finally gets Gabby Jesus back, finally gets his number nine – he gets two number nines back, and then he immediately goes and loses them? Like, Pep could have to do something kind of goofy. Um, and I mentioned over this weekend that when City does not have a true number nine, they're having to play, like, uh, Bowden as a false nine or Morris as a false nine or, um, or Sterling even there. It's not nearly the attack. So, you know, maybe it's a decent spot to, to, to fade City in, entirely. Um, and, uh, you know, favor Porto. Maybe at that point you could use like, the Porto keeper. Just a thought. Um, I think even if your off city doesn't necessarily bring you to, like, targeting Porto pieces, um, Porto's uh, set taker is Oliveira. Where is he at? 5,300, which, like, a lot of these have been PKs, so he's getting, getting kind of bailed out. But, I mean, he's fine. Just I, I never target, like, set guys versus city. Like, you're not expecting to get, like, nine corners you maybe get like three, four corners and a few opportunities because City is so dominant in possession. So it's not like a place that you necessarily go and target. All right, enough of that game. Let's move to Bayern and Atletico. There's a really good chance if Bayern throws out a clown car of a lineup. And when I'm talking about clown car, I want to look at their midfield and I want to look at their center backs. If they're playing guys that don't play together, look, a, a drilled team like Atletico versus a crap midfield and a crap back line could – cause tons of trouble like Jao Felix at 8k especially considering the ownership on the uh, the uh, Atlanta guys it's really interesting um Carrasco has been awesome for that 6500 it's also taking some set pieces my favorite play from this game is actually Ren and Lodi where is he 4700 I've um, been taking fullback that just look as long as we play like Ederling sleeps in UCL this guy like always shows up with double digit DK 
um, split some sets, open and act, uh, or sorry, it's active and open play, get some tackles, get some fouls to draw. It's just like, even when you go to like these uh, South America sites, and for Brazil, he's just been showing up. So 4,700, I think is a really, a, a nice gift and a really good cash play. Koke 4,600, just look, Atletico sets are kind of a mess. Um, you know, it's Koke, I'll have the cheat sheet up in the morning. So um, if you check this video again in the morning, if you're watching it tonight, um, look in the details, I'll have the cheat sheet there. Or just check out fsidfs.com um, by like 8 a.m. it'll be up. But uh, Lodi, Koke, Trippier, Carrasco, like they, their sets are a mess. Um, and I don't necessarily think that like you target one guy or the other because of the set pieces. Just know that like, you know, for 4,700, you have a chance of getting a fullback that not only has some set upside, but uh, also has good open play value. So I like him. I, I, I like him more than Trippier at 4,200, but I think that both are fine. Uh, Trippier just to me, this doesn't do nearly as much defensively um, or even like offensively in open play. He's just so tied to the set pieces that when he doesn't have them, it's kind of dark. Um, Marcus Lorente, I hate him. Like, you know, in our, in our little discord chat, uh, the little, we have a little emoji of me clicking off the, the screen on one of these videos from when Lorente scored two goals versus Liverpool. So I obviously have a bias for him, but he's been good for them. Carrasco, like I mentioned, though, probably. Carrasco, and, Carrasco Lodi, and Felix are my most likely plays with a side of Koke, potentially. Just because I think 4,600 for a quality of a guy like Koke is really, really interesting. Um, I think is Suarez back. Uh, he's questionable. You know, if you really want to be cheeky, uh, maybe like a Felix Suarez stack and run it back with me like one or two Atletica. Or I'm sorry, Atalanta. That would immediately make you different so i think that works uh byron side of things so Lewandowski's out Kimmich is out um look they don't need this game um if janabri's in he's been the one taking sets but like lucas hernandez left early um during the bundesliga slate taliso got hurt like those two always get hurt the, the, the byron's two french guys they, they have the third with coman but those two always get hurt um i just can't imagine just with byron's numbers decreasing if they Roll out that much of a like a number one lineup or however you want to say it, um, but Janabri sixty six hundred if he starts that's fine. I think more than likely we're going to see Douglas Costa fifty eight hundred. Like he would likely take most of the set pieces for Bayern, but given that Atletico is one of the top defensive teams in the world, and yes they lost four to zero, but this means means game means nothing to Bayern means everything to Atletico. Look, I just think that uh, Atletico's aside and. I could full fade Byron here and, and just be fine. And I think that's likely what I'm going to do. All right. Uh, let's just go sequentially so I don't lose my spot. Inter versus Gladenbach. I think this is the GPP game um, because of the prices. It's just not going to fit optimal bills. So, like, if you're spinning up at Atlanta, which the odds tell you to do and what common sense tells you to do, you're not going to have 9,400 for play. You're not going to have 9,000 for Stindl, even if Stindl's on set. So, Hoffman's out. Stindl is the preferred set taker for um, – Kladenbach, if he isn't in, Patrick Herman, 6,300 is interesting. Um, this past weekend took every set, but my guess would Stendhal would be in it. 9K, that's that's tough. Uh, so Playa, Stendhal, Thurum, like all really nice plays, players, really hard to fit on this slate. And look, from a tournament player perspective, if a guy's hard to fit, it means he's going to be low owned. And, you know, that's a place to differentiate. So it's, it's an interesting spot, especially with how crappy Inter's defense has been, has been, both in league and Champions League. It, it's interesting. Um, that's probably it from Gladenbach. If I'm targeting a guy, it's probably one of the, the attackers. Um, I don't think the floors are necessarily great. Um, Laner, 4,700 is okay. Uh, I think left back, Ben Sabani has been out. So I think it's been a uh, went 4,500. Look, don't, don't pay attention at 24.3. Like, I've worn this before. I probably should have done this earlier in the video. Bonus for you guys that are still watching. But uh, keep in mind, these, these game logs are just Champions League. Um, you seem to play a lot more games outside the Champions League domestic. Go to SofaScore, the score, go to RotoWire, go wherever you want for stat providing. But make sure you don't just pay attention to these logs on DraftKings and you pay attention to what the guys are doing domestically so you understand the type of player. Um, okay, I think that that is Gladbach on the enter side of things. I like Lukaku. Um, I like his striker partner, Lotoro Martinez. Honestly, for the $1,600 discount, I probably prefer Lotoro. Um, their sets should be interesting. If Erickson is in, Erickson always is the preferred set taker. Sanchez played this weekend, so I doubt he plays. Um, I think a, one play I'm really interesting to watch is Stefano Cincy. 
Stefano Sensi back to God, I, I'm actually completely blanking on who he played for before Inter, but even for like the national team for Italy, he's been a guy that takes set pieces, is really BFS friendly. 4,600 is too cheap. Um, so he'd be a guy if he was in starting, it'd be hard fade for me. Just think it's just it's just cheap for talent. Uh, and I'm a sucker for that type of thing. Especially when you see this negative 1.3 on this game box. Like, who the hell? That is just like uh, not a diehard soccer DFS player is going to roster guy with negative 1.3. The answer is nobody. So makes it interesting. Um, scroll down more. Look, there's one guy that, like, I just, oh, hold on. Let me see where Hakimi's price is. 5,800 is too expensive for him, especially as a midfield player, but Hakimi's always nice. Um, Ashley Young, even if it like he has a road to set pieces, so that means that Erickson's not in, since he's not in, and Alexis Sanchez isn't in. Like I can't pay fifty two hundred for Ashley Young. I just think he sucks for DFS. Like I'm sure he does something good. That's why Conte puts him in. I'm not going to claim to be like no more football tactics than Conte, but I know more DFS soccer con- uh, tactics than Antonio Conte, and I will not roster Ashley Young in the city for fifty two hundred. Um, Okay, that's enough. Just just one, like, complete YOLO. Um, if you watched back into, like, when we were playing Bundesliga a ton, and I had videos every day, Lazio Benes is a guy that I just, like, always wanted to play. When he's on, he takes all the sets for Gladenbach. I, he's not going to play, but for some reason, if he did, 3,200, he's a lock. All right, let's go to the crap game, which is, like, the crap game total-wise, but might be some of the best values of this late, and that's uh, Olympiacos and Marseille. So these two more than likely don't have really a route to uh, advancing the Champions League, but being in the Europa League would mean a lot for both these teams. Um, neither one are, like, by any means uh, Manchester United or PSG. They're not, like, running, rolling in the money, so COVID hit them hard. So uh, still having a chance that more money in Europa is going to mean a lot. So I think both are going to put their both best teams forward. There's three guys that I think are really worth mentioning here, which is Dimitri Payet, uh, Costas Fortunas, and uh, Florin and Dalvin. So I actually want to start with Fortunas. So for those of us that have played DFS for a while, played like international Fortunas back at, like when he would be the, when Greece was on a lot of states, was an absolute DFS gold mine. Takes a ton of shots, uh, tons of crosses, Monopoly set pieces with no Valbuena. 6,200 is really interesting for him. Um, yeah, like, if you look at what he did for City, he's not going to pop off the page. But, look, Marseille is in City, um, and Olympiacos needs to win the game. So, I think 6,200 is really, really fair. It just depends on your build if you land in this range. But I think he's fine. Payet, 5,600. So, he was taking corners on both sides. Just here's the, the thing with Marseille. Like, if this was 2019 Marseille, you would play Payet and not even think twice about it. He'd be like a core play. You just lock and load. They were like very DFS friendly. I don't know what is it what it is. They haven't changed a ton of um, of their squad. I mean that's a big problem, right? It's, all the guys got older or just get stale, but they just haven't been a good DFS team even domestically. Like Thalvin and Payet both scored this past weekend, but outside of the goal, neither one had a, had like a great floor game. I fell into the Thalvin drop uh, trap last game and cursed myself for it. So you know if. Dalvin is on without Payet. He's fine play at 6,400. I think I still would prefer for Tunis. I just think he does more. But, like, if Payet's in without Dalvin or Dalvin's in without Payet, like, at their prices for potential monopoly of set pieces, I think it's it's very in play. Um, for Olympiacos um, and for Marseille, their fullbacks don't really do a lot. Um, Olympiacos probably has better chance than um, – than Marseille. Marseille fullbacks are just worthless, guys. Uh, I'm going to say that both are going to show up with goals, right? But they really are tough. But Rafinha, 4,000, if you're there, it's fine. You know, that's a former Bayern guy. Holobos, 3,800, we know used to love crossing for Watford. Doesn't seem like he does a ton for Olympiacos, but they're all fine. Masoris is a guy back to, like, international time. Oh, he likes, like him for Greece. Um, but, you know, maybe find the, find the month, 1,200 to go to Fortunas. Uh... Only other thing I want to mention, Benedetto, so if you want like a YOLO goal, so he actually took the PK over Thalman and over Payet this past weekend, so maybe he's on them, striker for 4K, you could do worse. But it is a two and a quarter total. All right, we're almost done with this video. Thank you guys for waiting this long. Let's go to the game that I just don't care about. Um, I love my team. You know, you never walk alone. I'm a huge Liverpool fan, and God, they're, they're, just, they're just thrashed by injuries. They're thrashed by uh, – 
by fitness right now. They're just not going to rotate enough. Um, I, I have no idea. The, the, their prices need to be cheaper for me to really consider them. So YOLO DP, GPP dart, sure. Um, outside of that, I think it's tough. Um, I've seen some predictions that Robertson isn't in. Like he needs a chance to get some break. But like here's the, the hardest part of this game is Liverpool actually kind of need a win. Um, the only positives they end the the next game is versus Midland, who they should be told to take care of. But they need to get a point here um, to not like. I feel like the last two years for Liverpool, it's always been like a, a heart heart attack on the final day of Champions League. So I hope they can somehow salvage one here. But just all these prices are tough. Like Tadic even at E300. Tadic is funny enough, is probably the fairest price here. I still can't consider him just because of what's around him. So I think this game's a fade for for optimal. Um, for GPPs, if you want to like, you know, think Liverpool just comes out of their shell and scores a few goals, Salah and Mane, sure, that's fine. But uh, from a set perspective, um, it's Tadic. Um, you might see a little bit of Labiad, and uh, where's the other girl, Graven Birch? Um, all just been kind of like a rotation for Liverpool. If uh, Robertson's in, he takes. Um, if he's out, um, I've seen some predictions. I have Nico Williams, he could take. Uh, Tiz Mish, I, I can't say his name. The guy we got from Olympiacos actually can take some corners, and then Salah can take two. So but I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know how much energy Liverpool has right now. So it's tough. Like Klopp. Klopp, I think, is, has kind of, like, shown his hand that he's just frustrated with with the schedule, the fixture congestion. It's just like leading his team to, uh, you know, just some lackluster performances. All right, just going to drop a few final notes. Um, look, it's the same as DK. Stack Lumbiacos. Um, if you want, like, some darts, maybe like go – I really like Madrid. I think Atletico Madrid is it's going to score two goals, two or three goals on Bayern. Um, so maybe, like, a Felix or a Suarez. I haven't really looked at pricing. And then just keep in mind, like FanDuel always underprices dog center backs. So you can almost always get like a five to seven dollar center back there. Um, maybe look for somebody from Middle End um, or uh, from even Bayern. Maybe they have rotate one of the younger guys in. He's like five bucks. But spin down at defense. You can get blocks, you can get clearances, you can get tackles. Spin up at attackers, shoot for goal upside, and let the chips fall as they may. Um, outside of that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that. Uh, you do well on your contests on Tuesday. And then just uh, make sure you have subscribed to the channel so you get the update when Wednesday's preview drops. Um, and hopefully we will dominate that as well. All right, guys. Uh, once again, Keith, a.k.a. Gator Guy 231 Good luck. And with that, we say see you.